Hello, it's Modern Rajra Tiach, and today I will show you how to build and show a maze in Rust. First, let's agree what maze is. A maze consists of cells, passages connecting them, and for now we will only talk about rectangular mazes and cells. We want to connect all cells in some way. Since we will be building that in Rust, we will start with defining our types. We start with a type for our cell. This type is just a tuple of two unsigned integers. First integer corresponds to a row, and the second integer is the column, and they are both zero indexed. Zero, zero is top left corner. Next type that we will need is a representation for the position of a wall inside the cell. We have four possibilities there, since we are working with rectangular cells and walls. So we have top, right, bottom, and left. Finally, we can define a struct for our maze itself. We will need to remember the width and the height of the maze, and we can represent our walls and cells as a hash map from cell coordinates to a hash set of walls this cell has. We use hash set there because this data structure allows us to avoid duplication. We cannot have two top walls, for example, if we use hash sets. Same with hash map, because each key is unique, we can rely on having only one identity for each cell. Before proceeding to generate a maze, we need to do two things. We need to verify that our data structure allows us to represent the maze that we want, and we need an ability to show the maze. First, let's start with building a very simple maze manually. I added a couple of builder methods to our maze uh, type definition using an implementation block. First, we will use a method new, which allows us to create a completely new instance of the maze, which is empty with, but with predefined width and height. Then we have add cell, which allows us to add one particular cell to the existing maze. We will accept immutable reference to the maze we are constructing, uh, coordinates for the cell, and a slice of the walls that need to be added for that cell. Now we can use it to define a simple maze manually, and you can see how this maze will look. We don't yet have the method for drawing it, but we will add it in a second. We have multiple approaches that we can use for visualizing the maze, but we will go with a very simple one. We will just generate an SVG image. Now, SVG is a vector format, and it is very simple to generate. Rust indeed has an SVG library that we can use. It's very low level, I wouldn't recommend you to use it for complex vector drawings, but for simple stuff, like if you want to build there, just drawing some lines, it's totally adequate. Plus, we will add a helper method to simplify our work. First, we start by adding our SVG library dependency in our CargoTonal file. And now we can import the types we will need to do actual drawings. So we have a type for data, which just represents a collection of points for some specific line, for example. We have a path, which in this case represents line. And we have an SVG document that represents a whole SVG picture. We will also define a couple of constants. So we will have cell side size in pixels and stroke width also in pixels. Now we can add a helper method for drawing a line. In this case, we will supply coordinates for the beginning of the line, so from, and uh, relative to, so offset on the rows and columns. We first define data data structure, which allows us to add move to, so starting position of a line, and line by, ending position of a line. And then we can define our path. We just use black stroke, we set stroke width to our constant for stroke width, also set line join and line cap to square so that we have nice rectangular endings of our lines. Finally, we pass our data data structure that allows us to set the points that will be part of the line. We only have two points there. Now we can use it to draw one cell. We define a method add cell pass that allows us to take a mutable reference to a vector of pass, and we take our maze as an immutable reference, we take the position of a cell, and the hash set, a reference to a hash set of walls. We find the left corner of a cell, 
by multiplying um, column and row by cell side because here we need to switch to x and y we switch the order of those values and we set um, and we extract them as left corner x and left corner y then we go through each wall depending on which wall we are looking at we will have different lines so starting and ending position will differ but otherwise every time we will just push the resulting path to our path vector I'm showing the definition of the top wall. So we start with the left corner of the cell and we have x offset equal to cell size. And we then push this path to the mutable vectors that we have of all paths that we have. We then do the same for left, right and bottom walls. You may have noticed that we also implemented index trait for our maze data structure. We will look at this implementation a bit later. And here you can see the draw method that accepts a reference, immutable reference to the maze and returns an SVG document that we can then render as an image or just show it in a browser. So it first creates immutable vector of paths, then it goes through all the rows and all the columns in the maze and adds path to the corresponding cells to the vector of paths. It calculates in width and height of the remaining image and setting those paths onto an SVG document. It returns the document it generated. Finally, we can look at how our maze looks. Of course, defining mazes by hand is very tedious. We will look at the so-called PRIMS algorithm for creating mazes automatically. We first start with a maze that contains all the cells we need with all possible walls. We will define method generate as a method for the maze struct. We create a new empty maze with those widths and height. We create an array of all possible walls. And then we iterate through all cells, adding those cell coordinates with all possible walls to the maze. Of course, this maze is not very useful yet. It doesn't allow us to traverse from every cell to every other cell yet, because everything is surrounded by walls. So we need to start removing walls. To do so, we will start with some cell, let's say top left corner. We will keep track of our progress by having a hash set of cells that are already added to the maze, called inmates, and a vector of walls that we still need to check. And we add all walls of this cell to our walls vector to check them out. Since walls are not first-class objects in our data model, we will need to represent them as tuples of the corresponding cell coordinates and the wall position, for example, 0, 0 top or 0, 0 bottom, etc. We also have a helper function add cell walls to back that adds all walls of some cell to this vector of walls to consider. I also added a maze method called neighbor that returns us coordinates of a neighbor from some cell through some particular wall of that cell. In our algorithm, we will iterate until we don't have any walls to consider anymore. For each of those walls, we'll fetch the original cell the wall belongs to and the neighboring cell through that wall. Now, if that neighboring cell is not yet in our inmaze hash set, we insert it into the inmaze hash set, add its walls to the walls vector, and we remove the wall we have just considered from the maze, creating passage between the original cell and the neighboring cell. Perhaps surprisingly, this is sufficient to generate a maze that has the property we want. We can find a passage from any cell to any other cell. Let's run the code and see what we generate for ourselves. One interesting thing is that every time we run this program, it generates different mazes, even if we pass the same width and height. This is because our definition of the index trait for maze is using hash sets. And hash sets don't have predefined order. Every time elements are returned 
in random order from a hash set. And that's it. We can now easily generate large mazes. And the algorithm we discovered today has other uses. We will talk about it next time, and we will also explore the math that explains how it works. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.